Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to give you an example where we're going to apply a VCG mechanism. So in this simple environment I have, uh, this is a, a trade environment, so the buyer and the seller makes a trade and uh, the question, well they have private information about their valuations and so the question is what should be the optimal price. All right, so how do we see that problem? Uh, this is how we uh, sort of consider this problem. They, there's a single buyer and a single seller. The buyer is willing to buy the product seller can produce and seller is willing to sell the product that he can produce. Uh, the buyer values the object and his valuation is denoted by theta b. It can be any positive real number and the seller's cost is uh, denoted by theta s. Uh, which is again a positive, any positive real number. The buyer knows his valuation, the seller also knows his cost, but they don't know each other's valuations, okay? So the seller doesn't know the buyer's valuation, the buyer doesn't know the seller's cost. And the mechanism designer uh, brings the buyer and the seller together, asks them their valuations and costs. Uh, by the way, I'm not going to say valuation cost. So whenever I say valuation without referring to buyer or seller, you should understand that it means valuation for the buyer and cost for the seller. Okay. So instead of saying valuation cost separately, again, if I do not mention any player, uh, valuation basically means both cost and valuation. So, um, the mechanism designer asks the buyer and the seller their valuation. Tell me your valuation. The buyer is going to say, okay, well, my valuation is this much. The seller is going to say my cost is that much. And then the mechanism designer will compare those uh, sort of valuations, right? Well, the thing is, if the buyer's uh, valuation, uh, this is a declared valuation, is higher than the seller's cost, it means the buyer is willing to pay more than the cost of the object for the seller. So the trade should occur in this case, right? Because there's a room or opportunity for making a trade, a profitable trade. So in this case, the mechanism designer is going to determine some price a transfer, TB and TS, um, and then the mechanism will be over. Well, if the buyer and the seller announces something like this, uh, so the mechanism designer will say, hey, you know what? Uh, the buyer's valuation is much less than the cost of uh, producing this, this, this material and so uh, you, sh you, sh you guys shouldn't do any trade and so in this case the mechanism designer will say sorry no trade. Well okay well this is I mean by the way the mechanism doesn't have to work this way. The mechanism designer may say I'm going to allow trade and I'm going to calculate the prices regardless of your uh, announcements. Uh, theta b theta s right this is also another mechanism so there are like infinitely many possible mechanisms so the question is what is the vcg mechanism because we know that it is strategy proof so this is what we're going to calculate and the second thing is is the vcg efficient and the third is is the vcg individual or rational this is also what we're going to check all right so let's erase all that uh, so here is the uh, utility function. So the buyer's utility, the, the standard, uh, we have the um, uh, standard utility functions. The buyer's utility is V of B, which is a function of the decision and the theta, uh, plus uh, theta is the profile, don't, don't forget that, plus TB, the transfer the buyer receives. Uh, I mean, if it is positive, it, he, he receives money. If it is negative, he pays money, remember. And VB, again, the same thing, uh, meaning it's a function of decision and the uh, uh, theta, the, the profile, the type profile. But in this particular example, the VB is equal to decision times theta of B. So uh, D, the decision, uh, I forgot to say that. So the decision is either zero or one, all right? Meaning no trade or trade. So the mechanism designer is going to decide whether he is going to allow trade, one, or no trade, zero, and T, B, and T, S. That's it, that's what the mechanism is about, remember? Uh, at least for the VCG mechanism. So 
Uh, what about the sellers? The seller's utility is again Vs d theta plus Ts to transfer, but this time the Vs, uh, the seller's V, is going to be minus d theta s. Uh, what does that mean? That means if d is zero, if there's no trade, both buyer and seller is going to make zero uh, profit, zero payoff, zero utility because there's no trade, all right? However, if D is one, if trade occurs, the buyer, that means buyer gets the good, seller produces the good and sells it. And so in this case, the buyer's V is going to be theta B uh, plus some transfer uh, to calculate his utility. The seller, because he's producing, this is his cost, so it's minus theta S and then some transfer. Okay, very good. Um, anything else? No, not really. So if you remember the VCG mechanism uh, has a D, a decision rule, which is efficient. And then the transfer function T of I, which is a function of theta, which is, if you remember, let me just write the generic, uh, the, the definition here, J different than I, uh, VJ D, uh, which is the efficient rule, uh, theta J uh, minus the transfer, oh, I'm sorry, not the transfer, um, argmax, if you, let, let's not forget that, uh, not arg, I'm sorry, max, uh, over d prime in d, well, again, it's like d prime is either zero or one, all right, um, sum j not equal to i, vj d prime theta j, okay, so that's what the transfer function looks like in general, okay. Um, well, before I move on to the calculation of efficient D, well, what is the efficient D in this problem? And then what is the transfer uh, in this problem? Before moving to their calculations, I would like to open up those utility functions because these utility functions, they're not wrong, they're correct. But the thing is, they are, for notational simplicity, written uh, shorthand. It's like they do depend on a bunch of parameters, remember? Okay, so here is uh, what the utility function for the buyer is in fact. So the utility function of the buyer, well, first off, it depends on the D function, right? Well, D function, so let's write that, theta B, theta S, obviously. So these are the two uh, values. And then theta B had, theta S had. So these are the uh, declared uh, uh, um, values. So once again, the buyer's true value is theta B, the seller's true value is theta S. These are private information. Buyer knows theta B, he doesn't know theta S though, okay? Well, theta B had is declared uh, 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 a value of the buyer, which buyer knows. Theta S had also declared value of the seller. All right, so the uh, seller, I'm sorry, the buyer also observes what the seller declares. Okay, so we assume that whenever the mechanism designer asks the valuations to the buyer and the seller, the buyers and the sellers simultaneously announce their uh, valuations, and this is observable. Then the mechanism designer makes a suggestion, D, so according to some decision rule D, and then some transfer function T. All right, so this functional form, the, therefore the utility, is going to be the following. Well, VBD te theta. So uh, instead of writing VB, I'm just going to write this, D theta B. So what is that equal to? Well, let me uh, use this space because there's not enough space here. Well, first off, D, the decision, depends on the declared, uh, the buyers, I'm sorry, the buyer's declared value and the seller's declared value. Why is that? Well, because the mechanism designer cannot make the decision based upon true values because the mechanism designer doesn't know the true values. So therefore, mechanism designer is going to make the decision, social decision, according to the declared values, all right? So therefore, D depends on theta B had, theta S had. Uh, what else? Theta B. Okay, so I'm not going to put had. Why is that? Well, because the buyer already knows his true valuation. It's theta B, no hat, all right? 
Uh, so therefore, he's going to multiply this number with theta b, not b hat, theta b hat, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, well, so this is the vb part uh, plus the transfer, the buyer's transfer. Well, again, it depends normally, it depends theta, right? I mean, in all previous uh, episodes, we just uh, named it as, as, as a function of theta, which is here in this uh, example, theta is nothing but theta b, theta s, right? Because there's only two players. Well, but don't forget, once again, similar to d, t, the transfer, is the decision that the mechanism designer is going to make, and the mechanism designer cannot determine the transfer by the true theta b theta s because he doesn't know that so he is the mechanism designer is going to calculate the transfer by looking at the uh, declared revealed types so theta b hat theta s hat so that's it so this is the utility function of the buyer so as you see the utility of the buyer doesn't depend on seller's true valuation, which is what we should be expecting because the buyer doesn't even know the true value of the seller. All right, so it, you can ignore this part. Well, however, it does depend on his own announcements and his own true type, as well as the seller's announcement. That's it, okay? Well, similarly, well, I am writing this in an open form because we will use the utility function a lot uh, later. And so we need to know what the utility function really is. So the utility function for the seller, however, uh, let's ignore what it, it, what it depends. Well, it's, it's going to depend theta s, theta b hat, theta s hat, d and t. Uh, but we can just write it as minus d of theta b hat, theta s, oops, theta s hat times theta s, the true uh, type of the seller, theta s hat. Um, what else? Plus the transfer of the seller, which again depends on the declared uh, types of the buyer and the seller. Okay, so these are the utility functions. Um, all right, so now let's find the efficient uh, mechanism, uh, efficient decision rule, and then let's find the transfers. Uh, but let me erase these parts first. 